Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. Today we are going to be ranking all of the factions and faction wars from easiest to hardest. And to do that, we are joined by none other than MTG Jedi. How are you doing, dude? Hey, oh man, I'm doing so good. I am always pumped to do collaborations like this. And especially <laughs> with you, I feel like you and I just come up with such interesting ideas to play off of each other. I I literally, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about this topic. <laughs> and thanks so much for having me, man. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to have you on. And guys, we just recorded as well a collab over on MTG Jedi's channel. You can find all the links down below. So make sure to jump over and check that one out. Uh, we were talking about, slight, slight spoiler, one of the hardest factions, which is Knight's Revenant, one of my favorite factions. We talked about that faction in in particular uh and how you would deal with their faction wars uh over there on mtg jedi's channel and you're going to be doing like a, a whole series right do you, you have any uh sneaky preview yet uh, do you know who's going to be the second guest on that or is that yes top secret? i have uh i have deadwood <laughs> and oh, cool. yst lined up and awesome. uh if you know anything about yst <laughs> you can probably guess what faction we're going to be covering <laughs> but deadwood <laughs> is still a secret so i like it. um we have not decided that at this point but yeah uh, my goal is to get a different content creator on the channel for all how many factions do we have now 15 14. Uh, yeah well so sylvan watchers they're not yeah. yet active uh so it's 14 yeah <laughs> 14. all right sounds good so but yeah very excited about the new series hopefully it's going to help out a lot of people so definitely check yeah. that out but uh for now i'm excited to talk about this topic today with yeah. you. yeah yeah, let's let's dive in. I think the easy the easy one first is probably the easiest thing to break down. I would say for me, there's probably two factions that stand out as being particularly easy that are likely going to be the first ones that any sort of players beat. But I'm curious to see: is there any faction for you that would fall into that category that you're like, ah, basically everyone is going to beat this one with minimal effort? Oh yeah, for sure. There's definitely um, some at the top of my list. Uh, mm. Before we get there, though, can oh. you can you remind me what are we doing with uh, the A, B, C, and D so yeah. that I get myself on track here? <laughs> yeah, so it's probably a little unclear. So I think we'll break like A would be an easy faction. So let's say you think like Skinwalkers is A it means it's really easy to beat. We're basically going easiest to hardest. So anything, oh, okay. any okay. faction that's super easy is an A. B is a little bit harder than that. C is one of the more challenging ones. And then D is like, this faction is absolutely horrible. You really need very specific things to stand a chance at this one at all. So that's what we're going to okay. do. Yeah. I don't well, <laughs> I I think that that makes sense. Um, let us know in the comments below. I mean, tell us <laughs> what you think about all of these choices that we're making here. Hmm. We want to hear from you. But for me... The one that I really want to talk about is Barbarians. Yeah, okay? yeah. <laughs> because normally I would say that's an easy A. Okay. But actually, oh, but... I think that I think that it's sneaky. Oh, really? I think Barbarians is now sneaky. I think we can still give it an A. It, it's definitely very easy hmm. and one of the easiest to beat. But I ran into this the other day on stream. We were doing a coaching session for one of my viewers and barbarians was one of his last factions that he had beaten wow that's he had four factions left and one of them was barbarians mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and his reasoning was awesome i loved it he said there are so many good support champions in the game now if i pull good ones early why do i need to level up sill of the drakes hmm interesting and yeah she's the hard carry for the faction right mm -hmm. and so he had her at level 50 sitting in the vault and i was like oh well yeah no wonder you couldn't beat that faction you need her <laughs> she's she's essential um but yeah i think this is you know people's one of their first factions that they're likely to beat still yeah. is amazing there are great champions at almost all rarities no every single rarity there's great champions mm -hmm. and they're very accessible yeah what do you think about barbarians yeah i definitely agree i th i think like broadly speaking when you're looking at the faction war stuff that there's like two elements to it you've got number one like what is in the faction crypt so you've got faction crypts that have valkyrie waves in there that makes it a lot harder some of the bosses are much harder and then like you said, I think another big part of it is accessibility and having good champions across every level of the faction, every rarity. 
um, yeah, I I would definitely say Barbarians for me is an A because Sylv the Drakes almost wins the faction for free uh, and you get her six months in. Um, so, I mean, putting one good, very, very good champion who's useful in lots of areas up to, to level 60 isn't that much of an investment and you definitely get her yeah. to be able to take it down. And you've got good epics like Haika Toon, you, you definitely get, and she's good for it as well. Speed control. I, you could get Jamarsa. I haven't pulled mine yet, actually. Uh, there's very good epics like Sky Touched Farrakhan and Hoskarul now. Um, and then they've got good rares too. War Maiden, most people right. are going to build up. Sentinel's good. Soul Bond is very, very good. Even Berserker's solid. So yeah. y- you've got options there. Uh, and yeah, even Shield Guard and stuff like that in the, the Uncommons is a solid champion. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I think this is a pretty easy one. Yeah, just build her still the Drakes, throw some other stuff in, and you should be able to take it down. <laughs> right. Fun story. Sill can actually solo level 21. There you go. <laughs> he has a hard time doing it in the necessary time limit mm-hmm. uh, and the turn limit, but I have seen her actually solo level 21. All right. What about you? Um, any other A-level uh, faction crypts here? Yeah, so for me, I would put... It was actually the first crypt I beat. I would be giving an A to High Elves as well. I think High Elves is super easy to beat. Um, very similar reasons. I think that the the waves that you have to fight in High Elves really don't put up much of a fight. I think the mm-hmm. boss is, is very, very easy too. He's the one that can just like freeze you sometimes. I think he throws out some yeah. burns, but he just doesn't do much, the boss. And then you right. come in, once you get Arbiter, the faction falls over dead almost for free again. Now, getting Arbiter takes a while, but when you get her, it's almost free. And I think another thing for me, there's very few champions actually in the faction. It's one of the smaller ones, but they're very good. And particularly the rares are very strong. You've got Apothecary coming in speed boosting healing just amazing for this uh reliquary tender can come in to cleanse you bring another revive el hain you can actually bring up to 60 if you need damage for the faction and you don't pull any other damage dealer somehow unluckily she's actually good enough damage dealer to do the faction and she will ultimately be useful for doom tower as well um yeah there's just great ch- and then like the the epics are super good royal guard you're gonna build if you get him of course for so many dairies of content he'll do all the damage you need and so on you even get yannicka from the clan shop if you're really stuck um yeah so yeah small faction in terms of champs so that might be the one downside it might be hard to get some of them just because there's so many more champs in the game nowadays maybe yeah i think the one of the key things though that makes these two factions and maybe all of the easiest factions easy Mm. is that whoever you level up (laughs) that that's gonna be fine for your team there's no like specific requirements that you need like you need this champion to do this thing for this boss or this level whoever you want to use once you have that arbiter once you have that silva drakes you can just use the team you want to use and 100%. the champions that you're going to have leveled up are ones that are going to be good in this faction anyway so it all goes together to make it the easiest faction yeah i agree i, I was just throwing this up here as well i actually funny enough we will come to demon spawn later i actually think demon spawn is much more difficult but they've got the same uh, boss that they're ultimately up against which is the yellow boss again he's very easy he's got the aoe fear couple of hits at random it provokes you can do some freezes the supports are just healing the boss it's it's really not bad it's really not bad uh and the waves are so easy for these two that's the difference for me with a demon spawn is the waves are much harder for demon spawn but for high elves for barbarians i feel like it's very straightforward so yeah 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 definitely agree is there any uh there's a couple here that stand out to me as being sort of fairly easy to beat as well but i wasn't sure if they go into the a tier what what do you think what would you be rating as like the next easiest faction overall i think i think i would probably just leave those two as a but you could make arguments Mm -hmm. um for some other factions here like dark elves comes to mind here as maybe one of the easier factions Mm -hmm. but even i think that that's trickier than both of those oh much so i would probably put them at b yeah again there's a lot of champions here who are very good and that you will automatically level up in the faction but then you kind of you're getting into like you probably want some specific champions to help you out in specific ways 
like mm-hmm. Silar is really good to turn meter manipulate the waves and the boss or yeah. put her in a stun set. Um, you you love the Madam Saris to strip the buffs. You know, like you definitely need some control in your team for the waves. But at the same time, obviously Dark Elves has a million amazing champions. So you probably can find a way to beat it with your <laughs> roster. Yeah. Are you, are you on the same page here with the Dark Elves being a B? Yeah, I probably would put it as a B. I do think that it's significantly harder than the first two. Um, like you said, control is so important and buff stripping is important because you've got the Valkyries in, in this faction. That's what you got to get past. You've got very strong champions and you've got a very easy boss. But that wave is just tough to get through. And I think in particular, when I'm looking at the epics, in terms of champions that are good and versatile for healing you, for reviving you, keeping your team alive, it's quite limited. Like you've got Kaiden who has a revive, but it's not the best in terms of healing, I guess. I think Captain Tamelia brings some, does she bring some healing? Yeah, she she brings a small bit, but not much. So I think that is tough. Um, but, well, you know what the hmm. thing is, though, with this faction? Most people have a pain keeper. Yes. And yeah, so that's a good one. I think that's a very accessible healer. Whether you're using her in your in your clan boss team or not, she lowers the cooldowns on all your champions by a turn. She heals you. And hmm. then if you have her in a toxic set or something, she's doing a little bit of damage on the boss. So I think that she's one of the main champions to help you out in this faction. And then you have Coldheart in there as well, (laughs) (laughs) um, who definitely can be hard to keep alive. But if you pair those two together, they do bring a lot of control. Yeah, definitely. Uh, You've got Kale in there as well. So you've got really good rares, much like High Elves. You've got exceptional rares to help you. Um, Yeah, and of course, when you get nine months into the game and you get physics, that brings you a ton of control and survivability as well uh even turn meter for the boss so that can be a turning point too but right i, I think i think that's why i would say it's b is that with with high elves and with barbarians it's like you've got the insane support champions that you can guaranteed mm-hmm. get with you know a, a good chunk a big chunk but you know time investment you definitely get them and they just kind of unless you're going in with a bunch of level 50s with no gear you're gonna get through it with dark elves right. you actually you need to build a team that has yeah. the control and the setup to get through but they're Absolutely. such a strong faction that yeah and and the guarantee champions here obviously you don't get lydia till you beat everything but coming in right. with the mithrala or the Vizix, they're both exceptional faction war champions when you do get them further on but you will and they're super good for it so i think it's a good call Absolutely. So who else do you think we should put at B over here? I would probably be putting Banner Lords at B. It's a little tricky in terms of rate, rate, uh, rating mm. this and ranking this because, of course, at time of recording, which uh, won't be true for the whole year, but you do get Rhonda <laughs> for free right now. That's true. That's um, true. And I've seen rumors, I don't know if they're true, that there'll be like events to still get her for newer players, maybe through to May. So more opportunities oh. for new players. Don't know if that's true, okay. though. That's that is like some speculation or something. But um, if you're playing right now, you get Rhonda. She's a monster of a damage dealer. She just does so much damage and AoE damage. Yeah. So she'll hard carry your faction in terms of, of the damage dealers. Yeah. Uh, and then for me, you come in here... There's a lot of, we talked about, you know, junk epics, unusable epics when we did the Knights <laughs> Revenant video on your channel. Yes, we did. You got a lot of junk epics over here, but you got some exceptional ones too. I think Archmage Helmet as a guaranteed first secret room champion from Doom Tower Normal. So you get him pretty early on. Like you could get him way before Syl even uh, if you were really focusing on the game. He comes uh-huh. in with a super consistent AoE stun, speed boosting up your team. Uh, and that's very helpful like he brings so much crowd control and so much speed it helps you just control those waves keep on top of things and keep going i think he really helps out um yeah anything what do you think though about this faction or any champs that stand out to you or do you agree with the b tier for this am i being too generous um (laughs) well let's think about which boss this is first yes okay let me get the list up here so for for this boss it's a tricky enough boss this is the ally attack one so he's the one with the yes. the two ads that hit uh very hard 
Mm -hmm. um, that ignore defense, for example, they hit hard. He can do the ally attack. So yeah, if, if the ally attack goes off and he one shot some of your champions, you don't have a revive, you're in for some yeah, trouble. Yeah, I personally, I would fight for a C tier on this. Okay. Because those minions ignore your defense. And so mm -hmm. unless you have a reviver or a protector or a shield champion, some mm. way to live through those hits, especially with your gear level when you're trying to beat it for the first time, it can seem like, how can <laughs> I ever survive here? But you have Ursula the Mourner in there now, and obviously you have the legendary, you have Raglan, okay? And mm. you have some other people that can help out as well. But if you don't have those, it can be very challenging. Mm -hmm. I will say Archmage Helmet that you called out makes the faction much easier because you can stun those minions. Yeah. You can yeah. stun the adds, <laughs> and then, then you're not gonna be dying as much but the boss is gonna bring them back to life. So you're constantly having to manage that. And I think, especially depending on what your roster is, this can really feel like one of the harder, um, one of the harder bosses or, or factions in the game. Yeah, it's it's definitely, it's a tricky boss, like you said. Yeah, like for me, the Archmage Helmet is the ac X factor that changes it, but I'm happy to go with the C. That's, I think, fair. Like Stagnite's okay. insane. Ursula is insane, but you have to you have to pull them. You might not pull those champions. Like if you do right. pull them, great. You're going to build them. It's going to be a game changer, but you could be going into this going like, I've got five Knight Errants and, and that's it. Like, what do I do? I can't do it. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> there's not a lot of healers in this faction either. No. And the rares are all bad. The rares are, yeah. I some are okay. I don't like any I of the rares for, yeah. for faction wars. No, I, I wouldn't build any really. So, yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Uh, so, so would you say that Sacred Order, because it has the same boss, is the same difficulty? Or do you think that Sacred Order is easier than that? I feel like Sacred Order is probably easier. Um, and I feel like the reason is just the number of champions and what you can do with them. Um, okay. Like, I think the fact that you've got Cardinal who brings in the revive that you also have Godseeker who brings in the passive revive and a single target yeah. revive. I think that helps. It's double the chance that you have a reviver. Mm -hmm. You've got exceptional epics here, quite a few. You've got a lot of junk, a lot of junk, but you got a bunch of exceptional ones. Mordecai, Phoenix, Deacon. Um, even in the rares, if you're super stuck, like you can come in and uh, Castigator can bring you some good healing to try to top you up a little oh. bit. Even Armager can come in and he can turn meter the boss. He can enemy max HP the boss. He's a great uncommon champion. So I feel like that reason, even without touching the absolutely insane set of legendaries that you've got, uh -huh. um, I think just going in with epics, I think that this one is actually pretty doable. And like the waves aren't that tough either. Pretty easy yeah. waves. Um, and yeah, like F Phoenix could be a game changer. He can block revive on those odds, which is huge. Um, yeah, I think that that's the main way people beat this faction originally was mm -hmm. Phoenix blocking revives. But I think that I would put Sacred Order at B because yeah. of yeah. most of those reasons that you're saying. A lot of the champions in that faction are going to be more helpful, more survivable. There's more options. Um, overall, I think the legendaries are more impactful overall. So if you have yeah. one, they're going to help you more. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely think Sacred Order. We can we can definitely say is going to be a B tier here. Yeah, near nearly any one of these legendaries. Maybe not Errol. Errol's pretty no. pretty bad, but the rest of them are going to hard. Even Errol early game. I mean, he's going to hit super hard, but the rest yeah. of them are insanely good. So right, yeah, right, right. That's fair. All right. Anyone else? Do you think that would would qualify as a B or come be in discussion mm. for B C tier? What do you think about orcs being in B? Orcs. Orcs, I think. I, is I'm not sure. Ooh, I'm yeah. not sure. I'm but let me see. What are your thoughts? I was leaning towards C, but they did just get to Gore. Which he's very good. He's he is very good. Yeah. Uh, and I will say also the other new champion that I got on my free to play is Trumbor, and he yeah. brings increased defense, ally protection. Also, yeah, he's very good. And then he has the weaken mm. and the leech on the A1 to help with survivability. 
Yeah. I think orcs have gotten some really usable champions lately, but I'm on the fence here. I'm on the fence too. I I tell you why. I'm curious what your reason is. My reason is that I feel like you've got some good revivers, but you kind of really want Vrask for the healing. And I feel like if you don't pull Vrask, it's like, yeah, you actually got pretty good survivability if you got the Trumbor or or Sandlashed. Mm -hmm. Um, Duck can help Yorg or Tagore, but in terms of actually healing and topping up, so you don't keep just keep dying over and over again. I think it's pretty difficult. And in terms of like Varl and Gomlock are the only two guaranteed legendaries, and they're very far into Doom yeah, Tower Hard. Gonna, so yeah, you already have that beat beat that faction before the time oh, you get there. Yeah, the but I know are terrible. for sure that you can beat this faction with only epics mm-hmm. because that's what I did. Yeah, <laughs> um, I actually i I had Seer, which she was great, but there's mm. not a lot of buffs no. on my team to pair with her, so she wasn't like crazy or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think uh, Two Hawk does a great job manipulating the turn meter, and he can smack. Yeah. So he's very helpful, but you definitely need Vrask, Jorg, some type of healing in your team, and that is kind of difficult to get in this faction, you're right. Yeah. But everybody, well, most people would get Shaman. Um, if you're getting Rhonda, you don't have Shaman, but oh, yeah. um, <laughs> that was actually one of the things I noticed on, on my new free-to-play account is mm. that like I don't get shaman <laughs> and she would just be an auto include in my faction war team for a long time. Mm-hmm. But I think I, I don't know. I, I, I think say, for me I would go B, but I'm gonna fight this you in your get video. C so. <laughs> you, 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 you put alerts at C, I'm putting orcs at C. I, I think orcs all is right, a lot that seems harder. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. All right. I, I think looking at let's say the rest of the Galen packed here, Ocarin. Okay. Lizard Skinwalkers. I think Skinwalkers is more of a question mark. How about Ogren? I actually feel like Ogren Tribes is fairly easy. They've got really limited amount of legendaries. And again, no easily accessible guaranteed legendaries there. But I think right. when you come to the epics, I think you actually have a slew of really strong epics. One of the better That's factions. True. You've got Ugo. Claude is actually really good. Siege Hulk is great. Skull Crusher. Uh, Shatterbones and Grunch, maybe for the Faction Wars, not bad. Uh, They're definitely usable. Yeah, like Grush is a guy, now he's pretty far into your logins, but he is amazing for Faction Wars with AoEs, mm-hmm. healing, mm-hmm. you can put him in stun set. Maneater is amazing. Urigrim, even in the rares, I'm looking over, you've got Bellower is absolutely A tier. Absolutely yeah. incredible. Gear Grinder is even fantastic for our actually really good single target revive and yeah. a, a decent low cooldown heal. So for me, I'm looking at Ogren and I'd be arguing that Ogren might even come up into the B tier. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think I, I think it's reasonable <laughs> to put Ogren in B tier because again, there's some like obvious builds. Like if you have an Ugo, you're gonna build her. Yeah. If you have a man eater, you're gonna build it. <laughs> and so then those are just auto includes that are very good in your faction war team. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are serviceable replacements if you need to slot somebody in. Like a cult brawler is great. Yeah. You can slot him into any team. And the fact that most of the epics and the rares even are, have a lot of usability, yeah, I think I think I think we're good to put this at B tier. I mm. think players think it's at C tier, but I think once you get in yeah. and you work with it, I think it definitely should be B. Yeah, I I think so too. I, I think the funny thing is that in terms of rating the factions overall in the game, it's a pretty bad faction because the legendaries are there's just not many. Uh, which yeah, just drags I agree. down. Ogre needs some love for sure. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, but they I, have gotten quite a quite a bit new epics. They have, and that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'd say there'd be overall like it might be a thing where you might need to wait until you pull Grush and then build him. Whatever yeah. he is, maybe eight months in, which is far in. But it's like once you got Grush, I feel like between Grush, you're gonna have a Bellower, probably a Gear Grinder by then. It's it should be fairly straightforward, I think. Yeah, but um, in all honesty, like. I, most players shouldn't start working on beating the faction until you have Arbiter. Yeah. And then once you have Arbiter, you can only do so many things at one time. So getting <laughs> Grush true. is kind of on point with your progression and where you should yeah. be. Also, forgot to mention the faction war boss, but this one is a really easy one. He just puts out some poisons 
and he does some fears, but that's that's mostly it. He's just putting out a bit of passive damage. But mm-hmm. I think they're such good healers like Rush and, and Gear Grinder, I think, for Ogren makes it very easy. Lizardmen, then. I am inclined to feel Lizardmen is actually one of the easier ones as well. Uh, Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, what, what do you think about Lizardmen, then? Limited well, in terms of roster, once again. I think if you're patient... Mm-hmm. Lizardman is one of the easier factions. <laughs> I think if you're trying to beat Lizardman as one of your first factions to beat, it might not be the best idea because I think that you need Broadmaw and Rosin. Yeah. Broadmaw, obviously, you can fuse pretty easily, but he's like an auto include. Mm-hmm. Now he's mm-hmm. actually really great. Yeah. So if you don't have a reviver, if you don't have a turn meter booster, like fuse him, like he can go in a lot of teams. He did not used to be that good. And then Rosin is the permanent fusion. Um, but with how many new champions are in the game, I feel like Rosin is definitely harder to fuse now than he used to be. Mm. But mm-hmm. you can rely on Rosin as your damage dealer, Broadma as your reviver, and then fill in some of the epics. Yeah. So I think as long as you're patient, I would agree with B tier for this faction. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting one. Like, again, I feel sort of the high elf problem. You might, because there's not that many, you might struggle no. to actually get any of these epics, you know? And if you don't get right. them, it's tough. Like, I'm looking at the rares, and I, I'm really not a fan of the rares at all. Uh, I, Muck Stalker is the only one I'd personally really bother with. I know Metal Shaper and stuff is okay. Yeah. But I'm like, I mean, eh. if you have Skull Lord, you can use Skull Sworn. Yeah. Uh, that's an that's... OP way to beat this faction, but <laughs> yeah. most people don't have that anymore. Yeah. You know, Skull Lord mm-hmm. was a fusion, but that's been like two years. Yeah. Of course, anyone who's playing um, right now, if you got Pythion, Yes. That's, that's a free win. <laughs> so, I mean, this you, is, this is going to be my first faction beaten on my free to play, guarantee. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 let's um, put it in B because of those reasons. Absolutely. One one last thing about Lizardmen, you can use multiple Broadmaws. Don't don't forget that. I yeah. actually know <laughs> a very awesome player. He used three Broadmaws in his team. His oh, team wow. was actually three Broadmaws <laughs> and two Rosins, I think. I love it. So uh, <laughs> shout out to, shout out to my dude William. Yeah, th- this is this is the the permanent fusion faction. Rosin Broadmaw. Once you get yeah. them. Yeah, find some other stuff and you're good. Skinwalkers, I think that's such an interesting question. I'm I'm conflicted on where to rate this. This definitely for me before was one of the absolute hardest. They've got a lot of I new agree. champions. Is it enough though? And and for progressing through this the first time, what do you think in terms of, of rating this one? I, I think it's definitely between C and D for me. Yeah. It's definitely not a B tier. No. But now we do have Hoffreys yep. as an accessible champion. And we do have um the the pig. What's the the legendary? Um the fusion. Oh Uko. Yeah, yeah if you got Uko, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So now the faction has multiple revivers, whereas originally it had zero. Mm-hmm. I think the faction is definitely easier, but it's such a hard faction and most of the epics are bad. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> like your only healers in the faction are Steel Skull, mm. Rain Beast, and the legendary um Hackorn, right? Hackorn. That's yeah. the only healers and you must. It's a requirement. <laughs> I think honestly, you need at least one preferred two healers. Yeah. Which, let me double check which boss this one is. So this is the purple boss. This is the guy that puts out fears. He steals buffs and then puts debuffs onto you. Can debuff spread it. And then he also has the HP swap. So I think it's one of the most difficult bosses. Um, it is. It's, I think because like mm-hmm. you in this faction, you are putting up a lot of debuffs. Like, Fane is great in this faction. But if you put up decreased defense and weaken for three turns, the boss is throwing it back at you. Yeah. And then you're dying. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, this is a faction that puts up a lot of buffs also. And that's real bad against the boss, too. Mm-hmm. So I think between the fact that the healers are so bad in this faction hmm. makes it very challenging. Yeah, I, I agree. And then Cleo, I yeah. don't think carries you as much as the other champions that you would get either. Yeah, like she's she's. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. She's great for the waves, but when it comes to the boss, yeah. 
yeah, she'll help you kill the boss quickly, but she doesn't help you survive the boss. She doesn't stop him from stealing your buffs. In fact, she puts right. up lots of buffs that you don't want him to steal. Right. Um, right. So yeah, I think this is a tricky one because it's like for players that have been playing for, let's say, let's say you're a few months into the game that are coming into it with either Uko or Nishak, or if you're oh, lucky yeah. enough to pull a Ragash or a Snick track or whatever to me, like the, the legendaries are very good, broadly speaking. Yeah. Uh, they're really going to help you beat this one. But if you got the, either of those two fusions, you can probably beat this pretty easily. But if you just start now and you don't have those and you're looking at this pool of epics, the rares, you got like Gnarlhorn's quite good, but yeah. again, you're limited. I think, like you said, particularly when it comes to healing and staying alive through a fight, yeah. which is most likely going to be quite... Uh, it's a war of attrition. It's a long, drawn-out grudge match for most people. And then usually the boss just wears you down. It's yeah. not that the boss is that hard. He usually just wears you down. Mm -hmm. But I will say Flesh Terror can be used as a healer also. <laughs> oh, He's yeah. bad, but he can be used. I've definitely that's used him heal. before. Yeah, that's a good heal. Yeah. He does decrease that. So, he got I don't buffed, know. I think, he... didn't he? Yeah. He's still not good. But... <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm leaning towards even Do maybe putting it. Uh, yeah, I'm leading even maybe towards D. Um, I think so too. With a caveat that hey, if you've got one of those fusions this year, oh, yeah. that complete like Nisha can solo it. Great, cool, you're done. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, uh, probably. But I, I let's put it. Let's do it. The first D tier, I think. Skinwalkers sounds is good. tough. Yeah, you really, good to me. you really want to pull a le good legendary for that faction to get away with it. All right. Um, how about we jump into Knights Revenant? Because we mentioned that already. I, I think okay. that's another contender for a D tier. I think awful. Oh, definitely. Awful faction crypt. For me, this was, oh, I yeah. think, the hardest one, probably. Um, I, I mean, for me, it was definitely the hardest one also. Yeah. Skinwalkers was second for me yeah. in difficulty. But that was when we had many, many less legendaries in that faction. Mm -hmm. But for Knights Rev, it's just you need such specific champions to survive and beat this faction yeah <laughs> the waves are so difficult like the boss is not that bad but the boss is one of the harder ones and the waves are the hardest mm -hmm. so yep. you put that in a faction with not a lot of control <laughs> and it just seems so challenging yeah 100 percent agree you got the the super nasty valkyrie waves uh on top of that it's one of the things we mentioned in your video is that the garrett the legendary that you can definitely get thea is bad for the boss and she's the wrong affinity for the waves so she doesn't help you there yeah. um but yeah you got really nasty waves to get through uh you really really want rector draft to try and make it easy if you don't have her it's tough and yeah again it's probably the hardest boss um all, all three of these factions in a big way are sort of lacking in the healers which does make them a bit tougher uh, so yeah i think you can hear more about this in the video we did. Again, reminder, guys, over in MTG ah, yeah, that's channel. Uh, but yeah, I think D tier for Knights Revenant. I think that's one of the worst, yeah. <laughs> one of the last. Um, yeah. Intra let's, uh, let's finish off the Corrupted here. Demon Spawn and Undead Hordes. Would you have a strong ranking for either one of those, actually? I think that Undead mm -hmm. is borderline CD. I, I, I agree. I'm towards C but yeah. i think that that one's close also because yeah. you're yeah. so reliant on getting gorgrab for this faction 100 percent, yes <laughs> if you don't have him if you have him it's fine and there's lots of champions you can pair with him if you don't have him it makes this faction so difficult yeah like the this is the boss that ignores a hundred percent of your defense and you just like either get one shot or two shot and then how do you just live if you don't have a reviver <laughs> and even if you have gore grab it's still challenging so i i would probably put this at at d i think I, I agree yeah i think again that's one that people feel is actually really easy this was for me personally this was the last faction that i beat at the okay. time i beat it i did not have any legendaries in the faction i just hadn't any i've got I've got a bunch now but at the time i had zero um and it was really tough. One funny thing, I remember back when I started playing, it was a meme at the time. Every time they added new champions, it was another new undead champion every time. Yeah, you're right. But you're since right. then, there has not been, I believe, a single new epic for the faction in like 
at least a year, a year and a half, at least maybe. A year, yeah. We and and <laughs> the problem is like over half of the epics are really not usable. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple niche strategies here. Like you can actually use Lich, and then if you scroll down in the rares, I oh, forget yeah. what the dog's name is. Oh, Stitch Beast, uh, maybe that does the turn Beast. meter. You can use Stitch Beast yeah. and Lich to mm -hmm. turn meter manipulate the waves and the boss so nobody gets a turn yeah uh, but it's challenging to pull off you need multiple <laughs> it is multiple stitch beasts and then a really good damage dealer as just a way to cheese the faction yeah um but with the boss ignoring your defense mm -hmm. you have to have a, a ridiculous high level of survivability I agree. I will yeah. say Elgaius is S tier. He's the one who helped me beat the faction originally because he can control the, the waves the all on his own. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But it's so it's so specific on champions. And even Ultimate Death Knight, who everybody got for a while there, he's bad. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't really help you much, does he? He brings no, some healing, but all, what what enough. happens typically with Ultimate Death Knight is he dies on the boss. <laughs> yeah. Because you build him as a defensive champion, and then the boss ignores defense, and all the damage <laughs> is redirected to him on that first hit, yeah. so you just can't keep him alive. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say, <laughs> Mausoleum Mage is a really great healer mm -hmm. at, at the Epic. You know, you have Seeker as well, Husk is good, yeah. Bogoth is amazing, but if you don't have those champions, this faction can seem daunting. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I... I... I yeah I I put it D tier for sure. Um, Sounds good. It's it's kind of funny because a lot of people feel like Undead is one of the strongest factions because they have such insane legendaries. But if you don't have those, if you don't have yeah. Badel or Sifi or Rotos or Crypt King or something like that, it's mm -hmm. actually pretty tough. Which you might again, there's yeah. a good chance you don't because none of the, them are guaranteed again. Well, your Ross right. is, but it's quite far in to Doom Tower yeah. hard at that point. Um, yeah, they need a Void Epic. That would really help. A Void right? Epic Healer Revive or something. Yeah. It's about time we get some new <laughs> Epics in this faction player. Yeah. Now, next up then, Demon Spawn. Um, also have Valkyrie. Uh, I think they also do have the Martyr Waves and the Valkyrie Waves. So they got Difficult Waves. I would say they have a reasonably easy boss. It's the same boss as the two easiest yeah. factions that we've raided. High Elves Barbarians, the guy that's going to throw out some Provokes and Fears. Mm -hmm. chance to freeze what do you think I, about demon I think it's spawn though? easier than undead mm -hmm. but i think i'm still leaning toward a c on this yeah i'd agree because again you don't want to use the majority of the epics yeah <laughs> they're just not they're not very helpful mm -hmm. you know if you have Umbral Enchantress, she's amazing. She can control the Valkyries. That that's perfect. She's great. Yes. If you have Allure, she can control the boss. That's great. Yes. <laughs> but a lot of those other epics are just champions you would never build for any reason, like Excruciator and Scion. Mm -hmm. And uh I mean, even Soul Drinker, who you might build for Arena, is not good in this area <laughs> of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Dur definitely helps a ton. I think he's sort of yep. the re redemption of the faction. He's a regular Agreed. epic, so hopefully you could get him. But of course, if you don't have Dur, you're in for a very tough time to actually survive through all the shielding waves, etc. Um, yeah. So I, th I think with the, the perfect epics, like you said, you got the Umbral, we bring in Dur, maybe like Gorlos for decreased defense, Magnar for damage, Allure, turn me to control the boss. It's looking pretty good, but without those specific champs, even one of them, it can start to fall apart. Dur has you the- You do have Phoenix yeah. as a login champion. She yeah. is usable, but not she great. Yeah. She can seem very hard to use because her kit is so weird, but mm. she does bring healing to your team. Yeah. Um, so, so she can be used there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and resistance is good in this team also. Mm -hmm. Resisting those freezes and debuffs on the boss can yeah. be very helpful. So you can do that on any champion if you have the right gear for it. Yeah. Um, what are you thinking? Is this easy enough that we would put it in B? Or do you think we should keep it at a, at a C? I think I'd probably keep it at a C just because you're you're very reliant on the specifics. Like Akoth, you yeah. definitely get for free early enough on from Doom Tower Secret Rooms. He helps, but 
it's yeah. still tough like uh drek star you get uh yeah. for free from the bazaar and he definitely helps with the boss but i think getting through the waves is, it, tough. is tough with this faction like you yeah. unless you have door i feel like you're in for a tough time like achak is normally great for both healing um yeah. and for con crowd control but it's the wrong affinity for valkyries right. and martyrs so it doesn't doesn't really work um yeah. so yeah I, I i feel like it's probably a c tier faction i think that's a, a good rank for it i don't think yeah, it's I as agree. easy as the bees for sure yeah yeah that that sounds good to me all so right you want to do dwarves next or yeah. you want to do shadow let's, let's do dwarves and then shadowkin yeah why do we think what okay. do we think about we could even briefly mention what we think of sylvan watchers at the end predictions oh good for that. good yeah but uh yeah what about what do you think about dwarves i think for people dwarves is one of the hardest factions still hmm. i would say this faction has to be d it has to be because the rares are all just <laughs> there's, terrible. There's so many. Surely there's, there's one. There's so many. <laughs> They're all so bad. Yeah. A Veer is usable as a rare. Yeah. And maybe even Master Butcher. Mm. But even somebody like a Bulwark that you would normally have built, you know, on your account potentially, or some of those other Void rares, like you can't use them in your team. The yeah, boss ignores 100% of your defense, and it's a yeah. defense-based faction. The yeah. <laughs> entire faction has a tendency towards defense, and mm -hmm. man, it's just so difficult to keep your champions alive. Yeah, I agree. Uh, like again, you're cut. You're super reliant on pulling the Melga. I feel like for this yeah. one, who brings you the healing with the shield, helps you stay alive, and she brings the revive. It's not a great revive, but it can be enough to actually get through the faction. Um, but yeah, I, I do agree. This is a pretty tough one. You've got really good yeah. legendaries, but once more, none of them are guaranteed. Like yeah. you just, you can't guarantee you're going to get any. You could easily be sat there with none. Gronjar right. eventually, I don't think he's even any good. Um, right. So yeah, I think I it's, mean, it's we can go rough. old school on it and put Rockbreaker in the team, try yeah. to make him the target. Yeah, he's So good that, you know, his passive can eliminate some stuff. Mm. Um, and we can also do Demitha, put up block damage to survive for a turn. Yeah. But if you're doing those kinds of things, you have to have a lot of damage because you're not going to survive for that long yeah. unless you have Melga to bring people back. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's a tricky one. Uh, D, I feel like it's sort of C or D. I feel like I might put it in C in a similar spot to Orcs and Demon Spawn. I feel like I feel like it's maybe not the most difficult faction to to beat it because the waves aren't super bad. You could maybe one the waves star are it. really tanky though, yeah. so you need a lot of damage yeah. or survivability to get through the waves. Yeah, but yeah. then for the boss, it's just <laughs> all about survivability. Yeah, Everybody over fifty k HP, yeah. which can make the builds very difficult. Mm. All for right. me, I, I always see this as one of people's last factions. So I All would right, say D, D but do it. <laughs> this, is, this is your video. So you, no. you can change it to C if you, you want. You convinced me. You convinced me. I, I think you could maybe get lucky and, and one star it, but I think to three star this, yeah. that's 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 not oh, easy. Oh, I think if you just want to one star it, it might even be B. Hmm. It's B or B or C if you want to one star it. But to get three those star. three stars, man, yeah, it's so challenging. Yeah. All right. Then the final one we currently have open shadowkin the most recently mm. opened crypt as of time of recording uh and actually quite a quite a well-built faction in terms of number of legendaries and epics already dwarfing some of the older factions in the game what do you think yeah. about uh what do you think about shadowkin uh in terms of so shadowkin's the same boss as dwarves right uh dwarves um, and undead ignoring the defense oh he might not actually have it here on this one yeah, I believe it is the same one. I think it is. Yeah, the one shot. But I don't. Yeah. I don't think he added it on there. But yeah, no. um, I I'm on the fence here too, C or D, because mm -hmm. again, you have that boss just ignoring all of your defense. Mm -hmm. But I do think this faction is set up a little bit better for survivability. Yeah, you have Taragi with the ally protect. You have Hotatsu with the increased defense. You have. Uh, they added a new reviver, right? Kinagashi. Yeah, Kinagashi brings a revive. Yeah, Good that's revive. just got to be the most important epic if you have her. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people just do not possess the champions to beat this account. Mm -hmm. I, I did a coaching the other day, and I said, you know, you cannot beat this with the champions you have currently. 
And a lot of the legendaries don't help even in this faction either. Like, uh, it would be great if you have Gentoro and he really helps on the boss. Yeah. But if you don't have a reviver, how is he going to stay alive? Yeah. <laughs> you need very um, good and then gear. you have Noble in there. You have uh, Gamoran is serviceable because if you have one champion dead, he yep. will revive him after the boss dies. Mm -hmm. And then you can three star it. But yeah. it's still like, <laughs> yeah. you know, edge of your seat action here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think? What do you I, think? Though? I feel like it's probably C tier. Yeah, I feel like it's probably C tier. I think you've got you've got really big damage, like Nagorio, uh, Genbo. You've got some really big damage mm -hmm. dealers. Siren is really good too with the AOE decrease defense. She's a newer champion. Even Shinora oh, huh. is not terrible. Um, and yeah, you've got a lot of le like it's kind of a weird faction where they don't have healers really, but they've got a lot of leech. They've got a couple of ally protectors. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'd be leaning towards C. I think you could probably do it with Epics. It's tricky though, like you said. I think mm -hmm. you could probably you can definitely do it. do it with Epics. You yeah. can, and you yeah. can trick the boss into targeting Umitogi. Um, she has a passive that puts a block damage on herself. So I think C, but it's going to be a tough faction for people though. Yeah, I think I think it is a tough faction. I don't think it's as hard as some of the other ones. I think there's probably a variety of compositions that you could maybe get through, but it's it's pretty yeah. tough. Um, and like the turn meter manipulation stuff that the faction has is very helpful on the boss. Hmm. So if you have any champions that do that, that's really an auto include there. Yeah. Most yeah. of those are legendaries, but still, you know. Who was the new one? Was is it this one that gives you a bunch of faction? Yeah, she gives you like a bunch. Yeah, of I haven't tried her out yet faction. in this faction though, because she's a ta is she attack based? No, no, she's support. Uh, support. Yeah, I think she'd be pretty good. Yeah, and then like huh. Sachi's quite good. She's the leech, turn meter fill. She can do some revive. So I think there's a few options here. Definitely not okay. not an easy faction, but not the hardest yeah. one. Yeah. Ben, do you have any like initial thoughts on any predictions about Sylvan Watchers? <laughs> well, I Tough think the difficulty of Sylvan Watchers is really going to be defined by which boss it goes under. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that if you put this as the ignore defense boss that we we're just talking about, mm -hmm. it's going to be extremely challenging. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I think it's going to be a B or a C. I yeah. think a lot of the champions are are good. Yeah. And especially at the epic level, I think the majority of them will be usable. You have definitely the ally protection champions that you're pointing out here. Yeah. Um my my inclination is that it's going to be right in between B and C. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, it's it's hard to predict, isn't it? Like you said, without knowing yeah. what the waves are, what the boss is. Let me take a quick look at Searsha. I wonder, like, if, I have no idea if, if you know, like, if, for a new player starting now, how long would it take you to get this champion? Because she is a guaranteed, but... Actual she, never. Oh, really? Okay, so not useful. Yeah. And she's also not good either. <laughs> She'd be good for faction I, wars, like, but... After a month of uh, playing, yeah, yeah. I think I have the first okay like the, <laughs> the actual first one on the track unlocked right, right so i i just don't think that's gonna be an option here okay but if we have valkyrie waves this faction's gonna in, in trouble because yeah. there's no control i think there's, i think kate could be good actually in a stun set because she has she can increase a random okay. skill uh with yeah. an aoe stun set good for secret rooms actually is a rare attack she has uh -huh. a chance for block buffs not an amazing champion, but yeah, she gives you some. But a usable rare, right? usable a usable rare, yeah, which is yeah. always good to see. That could be, yeah, if you've got those really nasty and waves. We do well. have the taunt mechanic in this faction, so that could be very useful yeah, as well. Yeah. True, taunt, yeah, interesting. But if if you're putting up, if you're putting this <laughs> faction against Valkyries, I think we're in trouble. Yeah, but if there's no Valkyries and there's no ignore defense or you know with that mm. boss i think it's going to be a c or a b yeah i think one other thing to consider is that there's very likely we have not had a fusion yet for sylvan watchers True. and that's almost guaranteed to come in the near yeah. future i would say which is going to massively agree. help like if you're able to finish that fusion right now you're going into the faction crypt when it opens with a legendary in there like for me 
I've got Elva from the ridiculous 20 guaranteed sacred and that's probably the faction beaten because she's ridiculous. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. She so, makes it easy mode. Yes, she does. But like, hopefully a fusion, well, we could see one, maybe even two fusions for this faction not be unlikely uh, throughout this year. So that could definitely help. So yeah, I think it's tough. Let's put it as a let's put it in a C for now, but because we don't know. Sounds good. But yeah, so there we go. In terms of our overall, where were the originals? Uh, yeah, okay. D. Hang on. I I I put the originals out there on the board. No, nope. so far so good. What about A? Oh no, A copy somewhere. Ah, there we go. This is <laughs> oh, this is it. Job. This is the rankings. What do we think now? Quick final overview. Honestly, Fair, yeah. I'm sad that there aren't more ch more uh, factions at A. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Hmm. Like, we only have two at A and then four at B, four at C, four at D. I mean, I mean, it's kind of scaled appropriately. Yeah. But I really wish that there was maybe one or two more factions at A hmm. to make players feel like, yeah, I can definitely do this. I because agree. Yeah. <laughs> if you're trying to beat the factions before you have Arbiter, then it's going to seem so hard. Like, uh, man, I could never do this. When in mm -hmm. reality, you maybe just need a couple more champions, a little bit better gear. The factions are very beatable for every player. And overall, I love this content. But yeah, man, I wish there was just one or two more <laughs> at A. I know, yeah. It'd be cool if they made the Sylvan Watchers actually kind of easy. They, they probably won't, yeah. but it would be nice yeah. to make it easier. Um, that would really balance it out, I think. Yeah, yeah. Man, it would have been great if they had, if the frickin', uh, if the Plarium Point stuff or whatever, these mega events and stuff, if they actually gave you like really good epics, kind of like, you know, Archmage yeah. Helmet standard stuff. That would have been so nice uh, for some of these I factions agree. to improve it. Like I agree. Evergreen stuff. But hey, it is what it is. There we go. Like I said, I, even though it's pretty tough overall, Faction Wars for me was one of the, the most fun things I did in the game, progressing through it, uh, building up the teams and stuff. So yeah, but uh, look, there we go, guys. Let us know. Do you agree with these rankings? Do you disagree? And tell us why as well. Is there anything that we missed? But uh, yes. Guys, thank you for joining. Uh, MTG Jedi especially, thank you for joining for this video. It was a ton of fun. Um, my pleasure, my dude. Anything that you want to say here before we end out the video? Uh, yeah, come on uh, come on over to my channel. Check out the Faction Wars series where I'm going to be breaking down each faction in detail with a different content creator. Uh, the video that Nub and I did over there, such good fun. So much <laughs> good information on Knight's Rev. Make sure you check that out. Um, and just thanks for having me over here, man. Uh, I love doing this kind of stuff and especially tier lists, the debate, the, the dialogue, <laughs> so interesting. And I think really helpful for the community also. Yeah, great. It was a pleasure having you on as always. Again, guys, you can find the links to MTG Jedi stuff down in the description and the comment section down below and probably the title as well. I'll at you in that. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching. See you all next time. Bye-bye.